Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about concrete, how to clean it, and maintain it. We'd like to thank EMA Hip Hop Podcast. They've been liking and sharing our podcast. Around 3000 BC, Egyptians were using gypsum and lime to create a mortar that held stone together. Hmm. And then around 300 BC, Roman architects were making the cement very similar to modern cement. Mm -hmm. So the Colosseum, you know, the the huge structure holding like 50,000 spectators, which still part of it stands, they used this concrete. The Pantheon, which is the largest unreinforced concrete dome in the world. Mm -hmm. And then what's interesting is so Pliny the Elder, you know, the historian. Well, of course. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> wrote that the best concrete in the world was made from this volcanic ash from this part of Italy. Mm-hmm. And so the U.S. Department of Energy and Berkeley Labs have been studying these samples of this 2,000-year-old concrete that the Romans were using, mm-hmm. and they found it to be superior to modern concrete. It's, yeah, considering their stuff is still standing. Right, right. I would say they got it done. Yeah, amazing. So it's stronger, it lasts longer, and they say that it's made with less fuel and there's less carbon release because of this volcanic ash. Hmm. So there's a lot of ancient concrete made, but only the concrete made with this volcanic ash, I guess, can really stand up to you know the ages. And so they're studying it now, and they think that these new mixes uh, will be based on what they found with this old Roman cement. Take that, Egyptians. Yeah. <laughs> So in the 1700s, they created a Portland cement, which is basically limestone and clay. In Portland? And, and <laughs> actually, it was from, it's, it's a type of limestone you find in England, so it was called Portland stone. Hmm. And so they created, so using that limestone and clay, they created this basic cement, so it was called Portland cement. And that's the base of most concrete. So you're going to combine this Portland cement, water, and stone, either large or small stone, depending on your mix, and that's what's going to create cement. Let's talk about how to clean concrete. All right. Well, since it's porous in nature, we want to try to get anything oily or greasy cleaned up right away so it doesn't stain it. Right. So if you've got a car that's leaking, you know, get that up right away. For basic cleaning of concrete, I would start out with something mild and work my way towards something more aggressive. If you have a pressure washer, it may be all you need to maintain a really nice, clean, if you have a driveway or sidewalks or trying to maintain. And if you don't have one, you can rent one, like for the afternoon, probably around $50. That's nice. If you're looking to purchase a power washer, you're looking for something for concrete that's 2,200 to around 3,000 PSI. Mm -hmm. You always want to use a wide tip on it so it creates this wide fan of water. And you want to keep that tip about 24 inches from the surface. And you really want to make sure that when you're using this, you work in a pattern. You're using a slow, steady pace. And you're working with a mild cleaner. You're keeping that same distance because it's weird. If you've never used it before and you get too close, right. you can get one area really, really clean <laughs> and, and not the other area. Then you got to go back. Now, that's a big deal, but it's nice to you know keep a nice, steady pattern. You can get really nice soaps that are, you know, power washer specific soaps right. at most hardware stores. Or you could just use like liquid soap. Liquid soap, like a pH neutral liquid mm-hmm. soap is, is usually what most manufacturers recommend to begin with. What if you have a small stain on your concrete okay. and you don't want to use a pressure washer because okay. it's too big and you're scared of it? All right. So you can use vinegar on many stains because it's slightly acidic. You're just going to pour this on. You're going to let it sit. Great for dirt, mold, mildew. The one thing you got to be worried about vinegar is you, you got to be careful around grass and plants. If you pour a lot on, you can you know kill them. But vinegar does a nice job for basic stains. You can also use baking soda mixed with a little bit of water to make paste. You can put it on and then use a deck brush to start you know rubbing it Mm -hmm. and then I would rinse if you're creating a a baking soda paste then I would rinse it with vinegar and then the reaction of the you know the 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 volcano yes (laughs) the base and the acid uh, neutralizing each other it's going to foam and fizz and and that does a nice job of, of cleaning 
And for a lot of the stuff we're going to be talking about using brushes to clean, I would stay away from the metal bristled brushes mm -hmm. because if they break off small particles of the bristle, anywhere that all those particles are, it rusts. Oh. So I would, I would stay with like a, a nice stiff nylon bristled brush. You can use hydrogen peroxide and pour on and use a brush on many stains. Hydrogen peroxide does a really nice job. Mm -hmm. And then you can follow this with vinegar also. Wow, you love the vinegar. <laughs> so another non-toxic cleaner you can use is oxygen bleach. And this is a combination of washing soda and hydrogen peroxide. You make a thick paste with this with water put it on to a stain, let it set, and then you're going to start scrubbing the area mm -hmm. and then hose it off. And what I did we just talk about oxygen bleach? Well, I was going to say, I talked to the guys at Roof Ox because they have that highly rated roof cleaner that oh, we yeah. talked about it on the roof episode, our shingle episode, mm -hmm. and they use oxygen bleach to clean stains off the roof. So I was talking to them about oxygen bleach, and they said the key with using oxygen bleach on concrete is to make sure that you thoroughly rinse it or use a power washer or a pressure washer on the concrete because it's so porous it can kind of hold oh. some of it in. So use your oxygen bleach and then hose it very thoroughly. I read a report by Michigan State University Extension Service and mm -hmm. they said that they like using one gallon of very hot water and two ounces of washing soda. You put it on a stain, scrub it and rinse and they say with their research it does a very effective job of cleaning concrete. The Portland Cement Association they, they have an association? Yes. <laughs> they recommend pouring sodium peroxide on stains, letting it set five or ten minutes. You're gonna love this. Pour vinegar on it then, scrub it and rinse with water. Wow. Unique. Everybody loves the vinegar. <laughs> except unique. They <laughs> like bacteria. So you know, we've talked about them before. It's U-N-I-Q-U-E. So like unique. Right, just how it sounds. Their degreaser, oil, and tar remover uses all microbes. So you pour it on, you let it set, and it actually these, these microbes actually eat the oil. Hmm. So you need to keep this wet. You need to take a wet rag or a towel and cover it so that the so that it doesn't dry out because if the solution dries out it kills the bacteria right. so you pour the bacteria on you cover it with a, a wet cloth of some type and you you can mist this to allow it to sit for a few hours and it's going so to don't use the pressure washer yeah, <laughs> until yeah until you're ready to wash them away <laughs> but that's kind of cool and then bacrete so it's b a c k r e t e it's called their eco-friendly waterless concrete cleaner so this is powdered bacteria and this eats diesel fuel motor oil gas and solvents like xylene wow so all natural also so you pour this powder it it activates when it comes in contact with any of these chemicals and it again starts to eat up <laughs> your stain so just pretty wild let's talk about some mild cleaners so Simple Green, we talked about in the fence episode that a lot of manufacturers recommend Simple Green. Mm -hmm. A bunch of the concrete manufacturers say that Simple Green does a nice job. So everybody you, loves Simple Green. Everybody. You would want to, so let's say you have a concrete driveway, you'd want to wet that down first with a hose. It's going to help the Simple Green to penetrate. You, if it's a smaller area, you can just pour some on, let it set, and then scrub it. If you want to clean your entire driveway, let's say, you can put this into a hose end sprayer, spray it down, mm -hmm. and then scrub it. And Simple Green is primarily just surfactants, washing soda, and citric acid. So very mild, very cool. Crud Cutter, it's K-R-U-D-K-U-T-T-E-R. Mm -hmm. And the main ingredient in this is phosphoric acid. So really? this, this is <laughs> So this is what's in soda. <laughs> and with this, you'd want to work in small sections, keep it wet, they say that you don't want to allow crud cutter to dry on the concrete. It's safe for plants, safe for grass, but you want to work it in, scrub it, work a section time, keep it wet, and then hose it down right away. Mm -hmm. And and crud cutter is actually really good for removing rust. Yeah. It, you know what's funny about phosphoric acid? Uh -oh. um, they've the, I feel a tangent coming the, on. The American Journal of Clinical Nutrition said that they say it's linked to lowering bone density in most of their studies. Hmm. Pine saw is interesting. So mm -hmm. it's a combination of surfactants and glycolic acid. Really? You know what that's used for? Nope. Skin peels? Yeah. 
<laughs> so you can take a quarter cup of pine saw, add it to a cup of warm water using a deck brush, and scrub concrete for most stains or, or buildup of dirt and grime. It's in its diluted form, it's safe for grass. They recommended though that if you're using a lot of pine saw that you'd want to water down your grass first before rinsing it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's completely biodegradable, there's no phosphorus in it. But if you're using it in large quantities, then and and that's a great tip. If you're doing, a, you know, working with any chemicals around your grass or right. landscaping, if you water your grass or that area first, mm -hmm. it's going to dilute any chemicals that you're rinsing off your concrete. Sacrete has an interesting product. It's called Concrete and Asphalt Cleaner. It uses sodium carbonate as the main ingredient, which is washing soda again. It's non-toxic, so you pour it on, you scrub it and then rinse it away. You're and not going to spell sacrete? Sacrete, S-A-K-R-E-T-E. -E. Almost a missed opportunity and, to spell, JC. <laughs> and then, you know, washing soda, if you're looking to purchase washing soda, Arm & Hammer makes a washing soda that you can pick up at retail stores. It's alkaline, so it's not only going to clean, but it's going to kill moss growing on concrete. So if you have shady areas where you have this problem with, with moss, mm -hmm. Arm & Hammer washing soda does a really nice job. Another product we've talked about before, Wet & Forget. So, you know, I think we talked about that on the roof episode two for mold and mildew growing on roofs. Or maybe in our mold and mildew episode. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> so Wet & Forget, cool. It, it, they have their outdoor product that's completely non-toxic. You spray it on, so you can put this on your concrete drives, and you just let nature do the rest. So every time it rains, wind, it, the wet and forget bonds with mold and mildew mm -hmm. and it slowly pulls it off. So it, it, And this is safe for any surface. What about oil dry? So this is something cool. I think most homeowners should have it around their house. Been around since 1941. It's gray granules. So if you don't have cats and you don't have like an old-fashioned clay kitty litter, you should definitely have oil dry. So mm -hmm. if you spill oil acids. If you have, let's say, drain cleaners, either an acid or a base, this will absorb it and contain it. Uh, hydraulic fluid, if you spill paint, it just does a, a great job. So you can pour this on, allow it to set and absorb. And one trick you can do, if you have an old pair of shoes, you can grind it into the concrete, mm -hmm. and it's really going to do a much better job of absorbing. Then you're going to sweep this into bags, and if you have something toxic, let's say like, like oil, then you'd want to have this recycled. So you can go to earth911.com. Mm -hmm. So if you're so it's E A R T H and then the number's 911.com. You put in your zip code and they're going to give you the closest place that will recycle it. Mm -hmm. And oil dry is a great thing to put under your car if it leaks oil, so you can put it into a little pan. Right. Put oil dry in that and that'll absorb it. Aren't you going to spell oil dry? So the dry, so it's oil, O-I-L dash, and then the dry is D-R-I. Now for a couple of cleaners that are a little more aggressive, you've got TSP, so it's trisodium phosphate, very alkaline, does a very nice job of cleaning up grease and oil, but it's definitely caustic. It can cause irritation and burns. Mm -hmm. The phosphates are bad for the environment. So it, what's interesting, like in ponds, it depletes the oxygen levels and it destroys the mucus layers that protect fish from bacteria and parasites. Hmm. And high phosphate can actually kill fish eggs. This is something, you know, if you're going to use something more aggressive, you want to do it in moderation. What they recommend for cleaning any type of stain on concrete is one ounce of TSP in one cup of water and use that. You can create a paste actually using a little bit of diatomaceous earth to make it a little thicker hmm. and then grind that into a stain. Use a nylon brush, really brush it, and then rinse it with water. Another chemical that's recommended for cleaning concrete is muriatic acid. Really? One part acid to four parts water. And if you're mixing this in a bucket, you always want to add acid to water. You never want to pour water on top of acid because that chemical reaction can make the chemicals spit and almost boil the water. Right. So you need to be very careful. Muriatic acid is hydrochloric acid. So yeah. this is a poison. It can cause severe burns. It can blind you. You need to be wearing goggles and protection, rubber gloves. 
when you use this to clean a stain, you need to neutralize this. So let's say we're going to pour a little of the solution onto a stain. We let it set. We're going to scrub this with a nylon brush. And then once we clean the area, we need to neutralize this with baking soda. Right. But I would be very careful. And then the downside of muriatic acid is, let's say we knock over the container and we spill this. You know, How do you mm -hmm. safely clean up this very strong acid? So again, the oil dry comes in handy. If right. you spill an acid like this, you can pour oil dry on it. Uh, you can use cat litter that's a, a clay-based or sand, mm -hmm. and then let that absorb the acid. You're going to put it into a plastic bag, so you'll brush it into a plastic bag, and then you, you're going to want to call a recycling company or Earth 911. Right. You need to, if you're using anything caustic like this, you need to make sure that you're rinsing it like crazy once you clean your stain. Are we ever going to talk about sealing and protecting? <laughs> I'm ready. So because it's porous, you want to protect your concrete against oil, salt. Fertilizers can damage concrete. Mm -hmm. And then just to keep them clean. You want to make sure that you're picking a product that's compatible with your type of concrete. Because if you have stamped concrete, some of the colored concretes, you need specific sealers for right. that. Probably the, the easiest for most homeowners are the acrylics. They're, they're popular because they breathe. And you're either going to have a solvent-based acrylic or you're going to have a water-based. The solvent-based tend to be a little shinier or, or kind of a gloss look mm -hmm. and most of the water-based are going to have a, a satin finish. But look at the label because I've seen a, a couple styles that are water-based that have a wet look, okay. so kind of a shiny look. And then you can get polyurethane, epoxy, silicone, really depends. But the easiest to apply and the least expensive are going to be your acrylics. For acrylic sealers, you can apply it with a pump sprayer or a roller, and you want to put on very thin coats. The concrete should be at least a month old before you put a sealer on. The acrylic resins are going to last one to three years. Polyurethane and epoxy, they're going to last five to ten years. Hmm. The water-based acrylics are your most environmentally friendly. Right. So with this, so if you want to know when to when it's time to reseal, I do. You do the water test. Oh. So we talked about <laughs> throwing some water droplets on when we talked about the stone countertops. Right. We talked about fences, mm -hmm. when it's time to reseal. Same thing with concrete. So you're going to get some, some water in your hand. You're going to throw it on your concrete so it forms little balls. And if it absorbs, it's time to seal it. Mm -hmm. if, it if it stays bubbled up, then you can wait till the next season. For solvent-based acrylics, pump sprayers are the best way to put them on. Mm -hmm. And then make sure that your sprayer is rated for solvents because <laughs> there's different type of pump sprayers. So when you're at the store, make sure you look at the label. And look at the label on the product, too, because you probably want to clean that pump sprayer if you're going to use it season after season. So you're going to need something to clean out the, the hose and the and the tip. So look at which solvent you want to buy. Mm -hmm. And then a roller can be used for, for solvents and water-based acrylics. So you want to look at the application instructions. They're going to suggest either a quarter inch to a three inch three eighths inch nap, and you're going to get a cover rated for your product. Usually a nylon polyester blend right. is going to do most. For epoxies and polyurethanes, you know what I would recommend? No. A merino wool oh, lambskin brother. roller cover. <laughs> Let's talk about some top rated sealers. Okay, Sikagard was rated very high. It's S I K A G A R D. It's called their Natural Look Sealer. This is clear. It's a commercial grade water repellent and sealer, mm -hmm. and it's not supposed to change the appearance of the concrete at all. And it also resists the growth of moss. They can, you can put this on with a sprayer or a roller, and they don't want any rain in the forecast for 24 hours. Another one was Drive Hard, and this is a concrete weatherproofer and fortifier. So this has nano-silicone-based formula that... No way. That, that bonds, space Age, man. <laughs> it bonds the concrete to make it water-resistant. It's supposed to fortify the surface to reduce cracking and spalling. Hmm. So in, in What's spalling? So, well, in cold, like, like around here in Chicago, when you get that freeze-thaw cycle, it starts to damage the surface of uh -huh. concrete, so it gets that flaking, that little pitting, so that's spalling. Huh, who knew that was a word? Yeah. <laughs> so this drive hard is actually supposed to bond with it to prevent that. Mm -hmm. So kind of cool. I'd like to do some more research on that. But that was rated very high. Quickcrete has two products that are easy to find in most hardware stores, 
and Quickrete is Q-U-I-K-R-E-T-E. Their concrete and masonry high gloss sealer is a water-based acrylic. You can put this on with a pump sprayer or roll it on. Mm -hmm. And then they have something called acrylic concrete cure and seal. And this is in a satin finish. This is water-based. It seals. It protects. And this also can be sprayed or rolled on. Do you have anything else to add? If you're maintaining and cleaning concrete, I would say a few nice things to have. One would be an empty five-gallon bucket, a deck brush. And what I like about deck brushes, they're only 10 to 12 inches wide, so you get one with a wood pole. And nylon or polyester, you never want to use anything metal on concrete right. in case. But they're nice because they fit into the bucket. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's easy. So if you're mixing solutions, you dip it in, you can scrub. You're going to need either a pressure washer or some type of hose. Uh, hose on sprayer is nice to have because you can mix cleaning solutions in that. And then some type of nozzle to rinse down your concrete, especially if you concrete driveway. You want to seal your concrete once every few years to maintain it and sealing your concrete is definitely a must if you're in an area that freezes. Are we going to talk about Jabbercast? So Jabbercast is a new podcast app and it has enhanced content. Mm -hmm. So you can go to fixit.jabbercast.com and that's J-A-B-B-E-R-C-A-S-T and you can get our enhanced podcast. So as you're (laughs) listening to it, you can scroll on the page and you can connect with us on our Twitter feed. It actually has pages about stuff that we've talked about. Yeah. So on the hose episode, you can learn all about Jan van der Heiden. You can see a page <laughs> on Goodrich and the history of the hose mm-hmm. and a bunch of links with these companies we've talked about. So it's very cool. So if I talk about Merino wool, you should be able to see it. Well, or Pliny the Elder. Yeah. I mean, you can go yeah, right to Coliseum. <laughs> So very cool. So it's very, very interesting that they're, you know, they're trying this where it just makes it a more interesting experience. Right. It's interactive. It's nice. Yeah. So you can check it out at fixit.jabbercast.com. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or Jabbercast. Exciting. (laughs) If you enjoy it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. If you'd like to email us, you can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.